All right, guys, welcome back to another Opera Omnia video where we are going to talk about Onion Knight, the next BT character to arrive to Global Opera Omnia. In this video, we are going to go in depth with what his LD weapon does, his BT weapon does. And then at the end of the video for a visual showcase, I will show off some gameplay so that, that way you can have a better understanding of what his LD and his BT does. So as always, if you do enjoy the video and you find it informative and or helpful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for future content, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Let's talk about Onion Knight's LD and BT weapon. All right, so let's start off with Onion Knight's LD weapon, which is called the Royal Sword. It equips the LD ability called Sword and Sorcery. Now what this does is it is a six hit Ice Melee Brave plus HP attack, followed by a three hit AOE Ice Magic Brave plus AOE HP attack, which allows for 150% Stolen Brave Max Brave Overflow. The AOE HP attack deals split HP damage and it inflicts the Ice Resistance down to all enemies on the first HP attack. It grants the special effect Skill 99 to Onion Knight and it allows all allies except himself to act immediately selected the character will first act if used during the burst mode the allies will act after the burst ends and i will explain exactly what that does because that's basically turn shenanigans and that onion knight is going to be one of the first characters to be able to do these type of turn shenanigans in global following a few other characters that are come later down the line now all allies will not consume ability uses on the next turn. So one big thing about Onion Knight's uh, ability is not only does he have those turn shenanigans, but whoever he basically moved forward will have their skill 1, their skill 2, and their C65 gi given a free ability use. That is a very powerful uh, LD ability to have uh, right now in uh, Global Opera Army. Uh, his special effect from the skill 99 buff gives him a, an attack up of 50%. The stolen brave max brave overflow limit goes up by 30% the self brave damage dealt up and the HP damage dealt up go up by 20%. It extends the base duration of buffs granted by himself uh, by four turns and or four actions, excuse me. And then the party does get a max brave up of 30%. And again, I will be showing off gameplay of what his LD weapon does so, so that that way you can have a better understanding of what all of this is uh, or what all, all of this means. When you limit break his LD weapon at 1 out of 3, it increases his own max break by 10% and his attack goes up by 40%. It also increases the brave damage dealt by sword and sorcery by a small amount or 10%. At 2 out of 3, when you are using Sword and Sorcery, it extends the base duration of his buff skill level 99 by 8 actions. And then when you max out his LD weapon, you get an extra usage of his LD ability. Now, his LD board, when you are using his LD ability, it actually turns into an 8 hit Ice Melee Brave plus HP attack, followed by a 5 hit AoE Ice Magic Brave plus AoE HP attack. It it increases the brave potency by a tremendous amount and when you, you are using the sword and sorcery ability it increases the stolen brave max brave overflow limit up to 180 percent now we're going to talk about his ld call for his ld weapon it increases his own max brave by 135 percent attack by 165 percent and magic attack by 60 percent it increases the his own stolen brave max brave overflow by 30 percent and he also gets an increase to his brave damage dealt and hp damage dealt by 20 percent it is an eight hit ice melee brave plus hp attack followed by the five hits aoe ice magic brave plus aoe hp attack with 180 percent overflow and the aoe hp attack does deal splits hp damage it inflicts the enemies with the ice resistance down it does the turn shenanigans which again i will show off the gameplays to have a better understanding and then all allies on their following turn will not consume any ability uses so they get a free skill on their skill one skill two and c65 
Now we are going to talk about Onion Knight's BT weapon, which is called Kiku Ichimonji, which I probably killed the pronunciation pronunciation on that, but I tried. Now, Onion Knight is going to be the first character in Global with two different burst attacks. If you finish off before you get to his burst attack, whenever you are in burst phase with his skill one, you are going to do the finishing burst attack called a spell book. If you finish off with his skill 2, you will finish off with the finishing burst attack called Ninjutsu. Now Ninjutsu, with the condition uh, having the Sage buff not being active, but you have the other buff active from his skill uh, his skill 2, it's going to do an 8 hit Ice Melee Brave plus HP attack executed twice. Allows for 50% Brave Damage Overflow, Brave Damage Cap at 14,998, and allows for 50% of his HP Damage Overflow with HP Damage Cap at 149,998. It triggers the following burst effects to the party for 6 actions. Uh, physical Attack Up goes up by 30%, Stolen Brave Max Brave Overflow Limit goes up 30%, Brave damage dealt up 50%, HP damage dealt up 20%, the brave damage cap goes up by 20% and the cap goes up to 11,998 for the party. Now if you finish off after using his skill 1, uh, you will do the spell book burst attack um, and what that does is it is a 12 hit AoE ice magic brave plus AoE HP attack. It increases Brave damage dealt towards a single target by a medium amount, and it deals split HP damage. It allows for 20% Brave damage overflow with the Brave cap uh, being at 11,998, and it allows for 80% HP damage overflow with the HP damage cap being at 179,998. It triggers the following burst effect to the party for 6 actions. Magic attack up 30%, Stolen Brave, Max Brave Overflow, limit up 30%, Brave Damage dealt up 50%, HP Damage dealt up 20%, Brave Damage cap up by 20%, with the cap going up to 11,998. Now, if you use the finishing burst move Ninjutsu, that Ninjutsu is mainly aimed towards uh, single target character or single target enemies. If you are using the other burst attack that he does, that is an AoE uh, hit. So that kind of gives you an idea as to like which ones you would go for, which ones you would prefer. It really depends on the type of team comp that you got going on because the big difference between both of them is that with the ninjutsu burst attack, you get that physical attack up, while if you go with the spell book burst attack, you will get that magic attack up. Now we are going to look at some gameplay so that that way you guys can have a better understanding of what I have just read so that that way you know, uh, you basically know like what to expect when it comes to his LD weapon and his BT weapon with his double, uh, his double BT attacks, which I will show off both of them so that that way you know uh, what it is that I'm talking about. Now for this first part of the gameplay, you are going to see Onion Knight's LD weapon in action. So first things first is once Onion Knight does his move, he's going to have the option to choose whether to go with Gao, to go behind him, or Rude. And in this gameplay, I went with Gao. Then after he does his ability, you're going to notice that both Gao and Rude have their free ability use because of Onion Knight's LD ability. Now we are going to look at Onion Knight's burst attacks. The first one that you are going to see here from the same gameplay is going to be the finished burst spell book, which is that 12 hit AoE Ice Magic Bray plus AoE HP attack. Now the burst effects, once again, is going to be the magic attack up, the stolen brave max brave overflow limit 30%, the brave damage dealt up, the HP damage dealt up, and the brave damage cap up from Onion Knight's burst effect from using the spell book burst finisher. Finally, we are going to look at the other burst attack that Onion Knight has, which is the finished burst ninjutsu, which is the 8 hit ice melee brave plus HP attack executed twice. And from the burst effect, you get the same thing from what I mentioned earlier with the other burst attack, except that you get a physical attack up and not a magic attack up. 
Now, after looking at all of that, Onion Knight definitely provides a good amount of new things to team comms. One of the big things about him is definitely that LD weapon, bringing the turn shenanigans, the free ability used to himself and to his party mates, and having the ability now to do ice imperil slash enchant for the party, which makes him a good unit to bring into different kinds of team composition. And then, of course, with the BT weapon, uh, you have the option to do two different burst attacks having that physical attack up option or the magic attack up option it really just depends on the party comp uh what you're looking for to get out of his burst uh effect but other than, other than those two things um you still have that overflow limit the damage dealt up the hp damage dealt up and you know and the other uh stuff with his burst effect so overall on your night is definitely a solid unit uh he from from my experiences with Onion Knight, he lasted a, a couple months for me because of that enchant slash impale. It really helped a lot. The turn shenanigans definitely helps a lot because we are going to be getting into or we are going to be entering that phase for Lufenia fights in global where the turns for the enemies are going to be framed and they will either not be able to get delayed or they will not be able to get broken and even if you break them their turns will still stay on there but we will talk about that in another video related to the gameplay that you're watching right now where i talk about the introduction of that to global upper omnia and the, the freaking shenanigans that you have to deal because of that frame turn but uh other than that though i mean on your night he's a solid unit if you are considering pulling for him uh picking up his ld weapon would not be a bad idea because as an ld call those turn shenanigans and the free ability use can come in handy and it's it's definitely come in handy for myself especially when you get into that nasty position where like you wish you could have one of the other teammates up front before the enemies attack you or nuke you and if you have the ld ability equipped or excuse me the ld call from onion knight um it really really gets you out of a out of a nasty bind but uh other than that though let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about onion knight are you going to pull for him or if you are are you going to go all out for his kit or you or are you just going to pick up his ld weapon but uh thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for future content i appreciate the love as always thank you for helping me in growing this channel and that's gonna be it so take care and I will catch you guys in my next video.